I'm just a little eager beaver today. If I had the money to buy an iPad, I just don't get it, people. We're out here saving the turtles. Count one, two, three. And don't you stop the music. Get into it, won't you dance with me? Find a place and lose it. You can do it, won't you dance with me? Move your downtown with a sunset high and a body welcome back to my channel some of you may know me as my drifting desk where I help you conquer college and that's exactly what we're gonna do today as I start this journey and let you guys know how to become a more eco-friendly low waste green whatever you want to call it college student so today's video is just gonna be all the ways that I'm implementing a new eco-friendly lifestyle into my own daily life so that way you guys can either follow along with my journey if you guys are needing tips on how to lower your carbon footprint as a college student or just as a person some of these things are really easy things to do quite inexpensive and so that's something that I want to focus on because these are changes that I want to make in my life but some of them may be really expensive and I'm not expecting everybody to do everything that I'm about to say tonight this is not an overnight kind of thing that's going to be happening even some of these things I haven't fully intertwined into my life just yet but they're things that I want to eventually get to some of this stuff isn't even just being eco-friendly some of it is just being financially conscientious of your decisions a lot of these things I've already implemented into my life because I'm broke and a lot of those qualities are being eco-friendly. So I'm, you know, reusing things that other people have been using. I'm reducing my consumption. I don't have as many things. If y'all remember when I moved into my sorority house last year, I literally only had three bins of things that were mine. Like my whole entire life fit into three bins. And so I just want to share with you my ways of making smarter decisions just in my everyday life. Simple things that hopefully y'all can take from and try to become more of a low waste minimalist kind of person. <laughs> Before we dive on into the video please consider subscribing down below if you're new to my channel for more college related videos and vlogs and all that good stuff and also don't forget to follow me on instagram for all of the behind the scenes kind of stuff that you don't really get to see on youtube and all the fun that we have over there now i kind of got a little ahead of myself with this video because there are some things that i don't necessarily have with me to show you as to how i'm making these steps in my life but i've ordered them and they're on their way and i don't know why i won't just wait to do this video after i have these things to show you but i'm too excited to get started on this like journey in this part of my life and just to share with you guys because that's what I do with everything in my life so we're here if it's applicable and also link it all down below so that way if you guys are interested in something that I said or talked about y'all can find it down below if that's something that you wanted to implement into your life so I'm just a little eager beaver today and we're just gonna roll with it and y'all are just gonna enjoy this video as is okay okay I tried to order these things like in order from the easiest thing to do to probably like the hardest slash expensive things to do and so the first thing that literally any college student can do anybody can do to be a more eco-friendly green low waste person is to literally have a reusable water bottle and that I do I do have that hold on okay I got it I got it so both of these reusable cups mugs water bottles whatever you want to call them I just got they are Manhart water bottles reusable mugs and stuff this yellow one is a 17 ounce reusable water bottle that actually came with two different lids and so this one has a little hook on it which I like for when I'm I don't know like carrying them through things I don't know very easily carryable but then this one is for if you're wanting to use like hot drinks in this because it has a little twist top I'm sure you guys really can't see what I'm doing because it's a small lid but you twist it in order to like drink a small stream of hot coffee or something I don't drink coffee so this one I use sometimes for water but honestly when I'm drinking water I'm wanting it like a whale in the ocean that's like <sighs> and I just like want to drink it all so sometimes this doesn't give me enough water fast enough and I have to drink out of just like the actual opening of the water bottle if that makes sense but these water bottles have been great it keeps like cold stuff cold for like 24 hours and hot stuff hot for six hours I do drink hot chocolate sometimes and that's when I use the small one honestly you can't drink this much hot chocolate so I use the smaller one which is only 10 ounces so that way I can drink hot chocolate and it has like your normal coffee lid on it now both of these are BPA free which is great and they're reusable which is great so this is something super easy that anybody can start doing is to buy a reusable water bottle buy a reusable coffee mug I'll link the one that I'm using down below but of course there are tons out there just get one another simple thing to bring with you everywhere that you go to make sure that you are minimizing your waste is your own utensils and that can come literally in an old handkerchief that you put a fork a spoon and a knife literally from upstairs your own kitchen put it into an old handkerchief wrap it up and put it in your purse that way if you are out and about and you're stopping to get something on the go you have your own utensils that are reusable you could take them home and reclean them 
them instead of using the plastic utensils that are usually accessible on college campuses. That's really the only option that we have on college campuses. If we're getting food at a cafe, they're gonna put the food in a plastic container and give you plastic silverware to eat it with. So at least bring your own utensils and try to pick foods that aren't in plastic containers if possible, but college campuses sometimes don't make that available. So also try to just bring your own food and your own utensils, that will minimize waste greatly. But it's also so easy to buy an acrylic or stainless steel reusable straw, especially off Amazon or literally anywhere you can pick them up at some shops if you find them in the mall. Like a reusable straw is so helpful because if you are drinking coffee from a reusable cup possibly, or maybe a cardboard cup that's a little more biodegradable than plastic, you can use a reusable straw on it. We're out here saving the turtles. This next tip has nothing to do with what you have to buy. It's just something that you don't have to do is not using as much electricity, trying to minimize, of course, how many lights you have on, making sure you're turning off all the lights, obviously. But also for all my girls out there, try air drying your hair more often and not using a hair dryer or a blow dryer or even just straightening it. Like try to just rock your natural hair. You can use some hair product or something possibly, or even with the curls that I have now, these are just from me French braiding my hair after a shower. And then I take them out a couple days later and my hair is curly. So that's like a heatless, easy hairstyle that I love to rock. And even now I've come to love my natural hair so that way I don't have to do anything with it. I very rarely do my hair. And one that's healthy for my hair but also healthy for the environment. So we're killing two birds with one stone. My next tip is something that y'all know that I do already on probably a weekly, daily basis. And that is to thrift. Y'all know that I don't buy any clothing new. I literally only shop at Plato's Closet or Goodwill. I always find great clothes at Goodwill and great clothes at Plato's Closet. I don't really see the point in buying new clothes. One, because I'm a broke college student. I can't afford to buy a $40 sweater when I can get it at Plato's Closet for maybe six or 12. So when you have the opportunity or you have the chance, try to thrift your clothing or give your own clothing up. You know, if you have to go buy something brand new, maybe for every one item you buy, you donate three items to Plato's Closet or Goodwill or to a homeless shelter, something of that nature. That way you're giving back and that stuff's going back into the world for someone else to love and use. Along with the clothes is also just thrifting things. I love going to Goodwill and buying decor for my room. Literally everything in my room other than the furniture, I've bought probably at Goodwill, especially all of like my little knickknacks or decoration items, but thrifting for clothes or for items is something fun that you can start implementing into your life. And I promise you'll find some good things if you just go out and look. One thing that I recently just started doing because I never really thought about it is to use reusable shopping bags when you are shopping, especially grocery shopping because those places always use plastic bags, which of course are terrible for the environment. And so using your own reusable cloth bags are so much better. And I just went to Aldi's and posted an Aldi's grocery shopping video for you guys a couple days ago. I just bought my first two two reusable bags because I hadn't realized how much plastic bags I use. And so now I have reusable bags and they're giant bags for me to take to go grocery shopping with. Or even if you're going clothing shopping, because I know sometimes if you go to Plato's Closet or to clothing stores, they also will put your clothes into plastic bags. So having those, even just one cloth one rolled up into your book bag is so helpful because if you stop somewhere to buy something, you can just throw it in your cloth bag or just throw it in your book bag, of course. This next tip is something that's kind of hard for me to implement and it's just because of how I am as a person and how I am as a student. Taking your notes online, so going completely paperless, is such a good, duh, way to be eco-friendly because you're not using paper, you're not writing notes on paper, you're not printing out all of your lectures. You are paperless, either using an iPad and taking your notes on that. I wish I would do that if I had the money to buy an iPad, but I do have a laptop which I can type my notes on. It's just, I am a psychology student. Psychologically speaking, you remember more information when you actually write it down on paper paper and I love taking handwritten notes. It works so much better for me than typing them out. I get distracted so easily. So that's a me thing. I hope to get there one day. Another one that's kind of hard for me to do just because I love paper and I love the physicality of writing things down is to use a digital planner. So using a Google calendar or just your Apple calendar or some sort of method that you do digitally to keep track of everything. But I will say I've gotten better and I've like drifted more so to using digital. I do use my Google calendar a lot more now than I did in my friend freshman year or sophomore year, but I still use my bullet journal and like a paper planner sometimes. This next tip I haven't yet implemented into my life because I just haven't ordered them or you know gotten them yet, mainly because I still have one that is perfectly fine and I'm waiting for that one to go bad and then I'll buy these, but to use bamboo or reusable toothbrushes instead of plastic toothbrushes. So I'm waiting for my toothbrush now to just like go bad. We're almost there and then I'll be ordering some bamboo toothbrushes and seeing how those work. This next tip I did implement into my room right when I moved in and I really wasn't thinking 
thinking about being like eco-friendly. I was just trying to be like efficient, I guess is the word to say in my room. I have a power strip into each outlet. And so all of my things are connected to that power strip, literally only so that I could press the button and it all turn on or turn off. And that's so much better than leaving everything plugged into an outlet when you're gone, because that's still using electricity even though you're not using the item. And so when you're turning off that power strip, it might be sending a little electricity to that power strip, but it's not as much as if that power strip was on and you just like turned off the light. For example, I have lamps on my vanity that hook up to a power strip. So when I'm leaving or coming, I just have to turn on the power strip and the lamps come on, turn it off to turn them off. The same thing for my desk area. All of my electronics on my desk are in the same power strip. I turn off the power strip when I leave, everything's off. And so that I really didn't mean to do, but I've already had that implemented in my room. And honestly, it's efficient and it's eco-friendly. So that's something so easy that y'all can implement into your lives is just buying a couple power strips and having that to be the point for all of your electronics. That way it's easier to turn them on and off and you're saving energy. These last couple tips are kind of the harder ones, I guess you could say, either harder but also expensive ones to do, which I have not implemented yet. But these are the things that like long-term I want to achieve. And I don't mean long-term like 10 years, but just something that I know I'm not gonna be able to do right now, but I sooner or later want to get to being to use more barred soap products or shower products. So having like bar soap to use to clean your body, bar shampoo, bar conditioner, bar lotion, like that kind of stuff or like balms that you can get in the tins. Like all of that is more eco-friendly than buying giant plastic shampoo bottles, of course, but that stuff is usually more expensive and I'm broke and I can't afford that stuff right now. This next one wouldn't be too hard for me, but I know that it can be hard for other people and that is to go ultimately vegan. That's, you know, like the best eco-friendly diet to to be on, but also being at least vegetarian would be better for me. Vegan for me is gonna be really hard because a lot of my diet consists of like dairy, unfortunately, because I love cheese and that good stuff. Again, long-term, hopefully we can get there. And the last tip that I have for you is really only applicable for my viewers with uteruses. <laughs> so much waste comes from period products, whether that's tampons or pads, menstrual cups, or like reusable, washable pads in a way are so much better for the environment, but I can't bring myself to like use one and that's it's a me thing it's literally a me thing half of me thinks it's a little gross and half of me just doesn't want to clean it <laughs> that's just it's blood coming out of your body and then I have to like dump the cut like I just I need to get over it so again long term hoping that I can switch from using tampons and pads to using somewhat of a menstrual cup like the diva cup or using some sort of rewashable reusable pad I don't know but those are all the tips that I wanted to share with you guys today of somewhat little and big changes that I'm making in my life or going to be making in my life to be more eco-friendly and more of a low waste person, but also a college student. If you have any other tips that either you implement into your life currently or that you've seen or that you've heard of, please let me know down below because I would love to be more eco-friendly in small and big ways. So please let me know, let each other know and share your ideas with us. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Sunset high and I'm buddy's up Blood rush in the haze of gold